Knowledge cannot come to people without effort on their own part. In the previous tutorial, we discussed the role of knowledge in this teaching. We saw that it must go hand in hand with verification. There's an element of payment or effort in verification. Knowledge can be given, I can hand you these ideas, but only you can verify them for yourself. I cannot verify for you. In this tutorial, we will go deeper into the topic of payment. We will weave it into the thread we began last week of negative emotions and view the non-expression of negative emotions as a form of payment. We will draw from the biblical story of the hospitality of Abraham, a symbolic expression of the need of sacrifice to receive the present on its own terms. And we will see that resisting the expression of negative emotions is a fundamental payment or effort in this work. Man will not attain knowledge until he makes the necessary efforts. Only by his own efforts can he attain what he seeks. No one can do for him the work he should do for himself. All that another can do for him is to give him the impetus to work. And from this point of view, symbolism, properly perceived, plays the part of an impetus of this kind for our knowledge. These tutorials offer knowledge and inspiration. They each focus on one topic, which is the knowledge, and give examples from daily life and from ancient teachings, which serve as inspiration. This is as much as any lesson can do, and it remains for each of us to verify these truths for ourselves. Once we verify, we make the knowledge our own so that it becomes part of our own being of who we are. In this respect, this teaching is not so much inviting us to climb the pyramid, as it is inviting us to build our own pyramid using the B pyramid as a blueprint. So what did we learn from last week's lesson from trying not to express negative emotions? If we actually caught ourselves in a moment of negativity and resisted its expression, we should have experienced a strong inner tension reminiscent of the Hindu churning image. Non-expression of negativity, as we will gradually learn, is the pinnacle of internal churning or tugging. The expressions of negative emotions are numerous. Fear, anger, impatience, irritation, judgment, and many more. But the cause of negativity is always the same and always inside me. To resist the expression of negative emotion, I must find the cause. And to find the cause, let's paint a hypothetical situation. I am in my car, waiting at a red light. The light turns green, but the person before me doesn't notice. His inattentiveness delays me. I become negative. I honk. Negativity is never rational. I will permit myself to waste minutes and hours on TV or online, but I can't stand losing five seconds at a traffic light. So why do I permit myself to become negative? If we boil down this simple example to its most basic ingredients, the underlying issue here is my expectation. I am expecting the present to unfold in a particular way. Light turns green, we drive on, but instead it has unfolded differently. Negativity is my automatic reaction to the inconvenient surprises of the moment. Of course, the present never arrives on my own terms. It always greets me unexpectedly. Therefore, to resist the expression of negative emotions, I must make an effort to accept the present on its own terms. This effort is portrayed in the story of the hospitality of Abraham. Abraham sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. 
Notice that Abraham lifts up his eyes to see his guests. This is an important nuance and it is shown in the San Marco version of this story. Imagine that you're at home at midday and that an unexpected visitor knocks on your door. At midday, all of us have several plans laid out for the day, things that in our minds we should do. To greet this visitor, we'll have to push all those plans aside and welcome him. Can we do that? Or will we tell our guests that we're super busy right now and asking to come later and to call in advance next time? To receive the present on its own terms, we must be perceptive, symbolized by Abraham's lifting up his eyes, and we must be flexible, symbolized by his sacrificing of a calf. And Abraham ran unto the herd, and fetched a calf tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. Calves or bulls are stiff-necked. They cannot lift up their eyes as Abraham does. In another portrayal of this scene in a baptistry in Parma, the sacrificed calf is shown beside the guests, its neck forced into lifting up its eyes unnaturally. Sacrificing a calf symbolizes sacrificing inflexibility. Of course, Abraham's story is symbolic. We're not speaking of a physical guest or of a physical calf or of the need to sacrifice the rest of my day we're speaking of the need to be perceptive in that moment of internal negativity, that moment where I'm caught in the traffic light, and the need to respond differently where I habitually react. The more I'm asleep, the more will I tend to view the unexpected as an interruption. The more I'm awake, the more will I tend to view it as an opportunity. To receive the present on its own terms, I must lift up my eyes, I must draw away from the attitude that it is an interruption and closer to the attitude that it is an opportunity. I must sacrifice my expectation, that very ingredient that stands at the foundation of negativity. In actual fact, people have to sacrifice only what they imagine they have and which in reality they do not have. They must sacrifice their fantasies but this is difficult for them, very difficult. It is much easier to sacrifice real things. Finally, let's examine who it is that Abraham is greeting. It is a higher world, the Lord or the Master. My Lord, he says, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee. Abraham is asking the Master to stay. He is asking for prolonged consciousness or duration. While sparks of consciousness may come accidentally, duration of consciousness can only come with payment and effort. We must sacrifice our inflexibility or our expectation. On paper, this seems simple and cheap. In practice, it is one of the last things we are willing to relinquish. But it is in this very difficulty that lies its transformative potential. Which brings us to this week's aim. We will continue focusing on the non-expression of negativity, as we did last week, and now add the new element of sacrificing expectation. We will download the wallpaper of Abraham lifting up his eyes as a reminder for us to recognize this week's interruptions as opportunities, to tug against these expressions of negativity and observe the result. We only need one success, one visit of our master, one prolonged state of consciousness to verify the value of the effort of sacrificing negative emotions. Payment is sacrifice, but you have to sacrifice only non-existent things, imaginary things. All our values are imaginary. In the work, one acquires new values and loses imaginary values.